Last Sunday, at least 44 commandos from the elite PNP Special Action Force or SAF and 12 members of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF died after an 11-hour firefight in Mamasapano, Maguindanao. Interior Secretary Maroa said it was a misencounter. The SAF operatives entered the MILF-controlled area to arrest Jemaya Islamia leader Zulkifli bin Hir, also known as Commander Marwan, and Filipino terrorist Basit Usman. Because of this, the uncertainty that the pending Bangsamoro basic law between the Philippine government and the MILF may be stalled. The hearing of the Bangsamoro basic law at the Senate was suspended while several legislators have withdrawn their support from the bill. Maharap po ako sa inyo ngayon upang iulat ang ating nalalaman ukol sa nangyari sa mga sapano magindanaw nito nakaraang Sabado. In a televised speech, President Aquino admitted knowledge on the said operation but reminded to coordinate properly. Welcome to Opposing Views, a hard straightforward discussion of today's most pressing issues. The PNP's Special Action Force lost dozens of its men in one of the country's worst armed clashes recently. The last time government forces sustained a high number of casualties in a single day was sometime in 1992. While the two parties affirm their commitment for the Bangsamoro Basic Law, some are starting to doubt. So we ask tonight, should the government delay the passage of the Bangsamoro Basic Law? Good evening, I'm Rod Tepomoseno, and this is Opposing Views. All right, joining us tonight in our discussion is Magdalo Party List Representative Francisco Ashley Acedillo. Kong, Kong Ashley, good evening. Good evening, Attorney Rod. Yeah, can you give us a summary of your position, maybe in 30 seconds? Uh, <clears throat> what do you think about this debate question? Should the government delay the Bank of Morocco Basic Law? Uh, many of us in Congress believe that uh, we need more time to deliberate on the mm -hmm. bill that will be the Bank of Morocco Basic Law, uh, especially to factor in many questions that have been raised already and most especially in light of what happened in Mama Sapano uh, last January 25th. Mm -hmm. And so in so doing, there will, there will have to be some delay. So the answer is yes. All right. Thank you very much. Now on the opposing side is the lead convener of the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, Amina Rasul. Mama Amina, good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Can you give us, uh, in, in summary, uh, your position regarding this debate question? Given uh, uh, what happened in uh, Mama Sapano, do you think that we should delay? the Bangsamoro Basic Law, or the passage of yeah. the BBL? Short answer is no. Mm -hmm. um, first, there has been several months already of review, starting mm -hmm. from last year. We've had hearings outside. Mm -hmm. So there can be no more additional issues. Second, we have too much at stake here. Mm -hmm. This piece is a peace process that took 18 years mm -hmm. to put together. Mm -hmm. We need to have the basic law now. So give peace a chance. All right. Okay, so there... There are a lot of questions. Uh, I think we can all agree uh, yes. on this. No? That there, are, there are a lot more questions mm -hmm. now uh, compared to perhaps last week regarding the, the BBL. There were already a lot of questions then, but more so now in light of what happened in Mama Zapata, this very tragic incident. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's start off with this. No? And uh, I think a lot of people are asking this. Uh, and I'll, I'll start it off with you, um, uh, uh, Ashley. <coughs> Did the SAF follow the protocol, the, the correct protocol in in <coughs> issuing the warrant, or I guess in implementing this, this procedure? Uh, prior to coming here, I wanted to get hold of the actual document which would state, in mm -hmm. fact, what really is the protocol. Mm -hmm. However, in, in the absence of that document, uh, despite uh, great effort, let's just say uh, uh, that for the sake of discussion, this is the protocol, okay? That uh, since we are in the midst of peace talks and a ceasefire, mm -hmm. any troop movement may it be uh, military or police, mm -hmm. uh, should uh, concomitantly uh, effect the relaying of information to the MILF regarding that uh, troop movement. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, that is our protocol for the sake of this discussion. So uh, I would say that uh, that is not absolute. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in an ideal scenario, uh, that, would be, uh, that would be welcome, however, uh, at the very least for operational security requirements in order to safeguard the lives of our uh, security forces, 
that should be waived. That mm -hmm. should not be an absolute requirement. Mm -hmm. So in, in that sense, uh, it cannot be uh, made uh, as a reason why the level of atrocity that befell our uh, SAF troopers mm -hmm. could be justified merely uh, on the say-so that there was no coordination. So you're saying based on the sensitivity, let's say, of the operation, yes. sometimes uh, upon the call of the SAF or the leadership of the SAF, they can, they can proceed with, let's say, issuing a warrant. That's correct, and right. especially because this is a, a lawful, uh, mm -hmm. ma uh, lawfully mandated operation based on uh, the issuance mm -hmm. of warrants of uh, arrest. Mama Mina, do you agree with that? Do you think that uh, in this case, mm -hmm. there's, I mean, the SAF was in a way excused not coordinating perhaps with the MILF mm -hmm. in, in their operation? Oh, uh, absolutely not, and I disagree with, uh, mm -hmm. with Ashley about this. First, this is not the first time that mm -hmm. this has happened. Um, but the, I think it's the first time that it had tragic consequences. There have been several missions mm -hmm. of the AFP and the police before to capture rogue elements, to capture terrorists, mm -hmm. and even against the BIFF. There is a process, there's a protocol, uh, where the joint committee, the um, Philippine military and the MILF, have agreements to notify mm -hmm. each other. And when that was done, the missions were always successful. No casualty target uh, acquired. In fact, um, retired General Boogie Mendoza was just talking about the instances that he knew of successful operations that were properly coordinated with the MILF. Kasi ang ginagawa, what the MILF does is when they have word that there's going to be a government mission, they stay clear. They move out and they allow the the mm -hmm. government troops to come in and conduct its mission and then exit. Mm -hmm. But if you don't inform them, and there are a hundred soldiers in fatigue mm -hmm. coming into your territory, and remember uh, President Arab's all-out war where they attacked Camp Abu Bakr? Mm -hmm. It was in the midst of peace negotiations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you so have all of these intense so instances before. So you're saying the SAF needed the, the permission of, of MILF? They needed proper coordination. Proper and if they had coordinated with uh, the AFP hmm. or even the PNP in command, in, uh, in uh, arm, they would have been even informed. For, even for the issuance of an outstanding warrant, they, they need to For coordinate? the serving of the warrant. Mm, they needed coordination, that's what you, you have say. to coordinate yes, because yeah. you cannot afford a misencounter. You've got mm. armed groups right. who are still def uh, defending their territory mm. because the reality is we have signed pieces of paper, but we do not have peace yet. Yes. We need to pass the Bangsamoro Basic Law. Once that's done and the mm. decommissioning will, will begin, in fact, they're going to be discussing decommissioning uh, in KL. Mm -hmm. The transition will allow us now to set up the democratic civilian institutions where the, gov the, mm -hmm. the MILF will actually now lay down and the war. Be reintegrated. Yeah. Exactly. Now, what but was right it? Now you it's still you mentioned the uh, misencounter, and I'll ask yeah. Ashley. Oh, yeah, yes, Ashley, yeah. <coughs> uh, before we proceed mm -hmm. to the misencounter, uh, mm -hmm. Rod, I'd just like to address two points that were raised by uh, Secretary Rasul. One, uh, with regard to uh, the 100% uh, the uh, success of uh, operations every time there was uh, coordination. a coordination with yeah. the MILF, I would beg to disagree. Uh, uh, we have uh, both uh, our actual uh, membership in the AFP and our uh, constant contact with them, even now that we are outside the AFP, would uh, point us to the other direction. Mm -hmm. It was not always the case, uh, Secretary Rasul, because Precisely that relaying of information, that coordination, also led to the escape of uh, high-value uh, MILF uh, uh, personalities mm -hmm. who were also the subject of uh, uh, warrants of arrest. Uh, so this makes it difficult. This actually puts mm -hmm. our uh, security forces at a disadvantage because uh, if they coordinate, there is still the possibility that uh, their targets will escape and if they don't coordinate, then it, is, uh, it can be said that uh, they deserve the fate that, they, that, that will befall them, especially uh, in reference to what happened to uh, them in Mama Sapano. Second point, uh, 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 we are not yet at the stage, uh, we do not require, by the way, 
uh, the passage of the BBL mm. for us to undertake uh, Security, uh, the, uh, the uh, mm. activities under uh, normalization. Under the normalization annex, phase one and phase two actually can happen in the absence of the BBL. Because this wasn't a military operation, this was a police operation. Yes, right? uh, but uh, actually uh, the coordination <coughs> of the, uh, the required rather coordination between the government and uh, the MILF requires that both military and police forces we'll have, we'll have uh, will have to coordinate. But what I'm saying is, and this is my original contention, it should not be absolute. Mm. Because as I just uh, cited a while ago, uh, it actually puts our forces, either military or police, at a, dis a clear disadvantage. So whose call will it be uh, in a situation like that? that the SAF can make its own call, and therefore the MILF, let's say, would not have a say at all uh, in, in something like that, because it will be purely upon the, the judgment of the leadership of the SAF, right? Well, if we are to believe the statement of the president uh, uh, in, in his uh, address to the nation, uh, it was the judgment call of the uh, PNP SAF uh, commander. So uh, as it uh, stands now, he is bearing the brunt, all of it, of uh, the decision that he made. And he called it a judgment call. Mm -hmm. So as to that judgment call uh, being correct or not, of course, obviously, you have 44 dead. And we have uh, other details, the, the more intimate details of the operation uh, have not come to light yet. If ever, they will come to light because some of it will still be classified. Be investigated. So, uh, so let's, let's uh, you mentioned the word misencounter, and uh, I mean, I also mentioned the word misencounter. Yes. This was mm -hmm. uh, a quote from uh, Secretary, DILG Secretary mm -hmm. Mar Rojas. No? Was it um, merely a misencounter, this, this whole well, uh, incident? Well, definitely. But first, uh, let me just say that there are two um, issues here that I do not think we should tie together. Mm -hmm. One is the investigation of the misencounter. Justice has to be served to all of those that made this happen. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the Bangsamoro Basic Law. And I do not think that this misencounter really has any bearing on the Bangsamoro Basic Law. In fact, if we have the Bangsamoro Basic Law and you already established the civilian rule in the area, mm -hmm. you will no longer have calls for these kinds of misencounters. Because they are now going to be part of, of mm -hmm. us. They're going to be part of governance. They will be the ones responsible to run after rogue elements and criminals, etc. So I would think if we want to prevent future misencounters and have a just and lasting peace, we need to pass the law. Now, with regards to the misencounter, um, President Aquino has been quoted as saying he instructed the, uh, the SAF to coordinate with the AFP. Because they're, they're, you cannot prevent uh, slight occurrences of misencounters, uh, escape, uh, you know, the, that the, the guy you're pursuing would, uh, would escape. But generally, if you take a look at the track records, casualties have been very low when there is proper coordination. In fact, if I may uh, just uh, bring you back to the history of the casualty ceasefire violations, when they implemented the protocols, and this was even during the time of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, the, uh, the incidents of violations dropped from like 160 plus uh, before the protocols to seven mm -hmm. in like what, six years time. For, the, for those that were properly coordinated. Properly coordinated because both, since they're invested in the peace process, both sides made sure that the other side would know we have an operation mm -hmm. in your area, please stay clear. And, and that kind of a working relationship leads to successful mm -hmm. governance and, success and, and secure conditions. Mm -hmm. But so, whatever may have happened with this, and I really do hope that those responsible are made to pay for what happened to our citizens who are just protecting us and maybe not knowing the danger that they were going into. This should not delay the passage of the Bangsamoro Basic. Now, taking off from that, do you th can we discuss that misencounter? Yes. Because obviously, again, th this show is about also informing the public yeah. what you ex exactly mean by a misencounter. Okay, a, a misencounter uh, can only happen between two friendly forces. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at this point of the peace talks and the ceasefire, uh, it should be assumed already that the government and the MILF are friendly forces. Yes. Now. 
what happens in a misencounter after the initial exchange of fire there is there it is incumbent upon both sides either one of them to verify who they are contending with because they should de-escalate at the soonest possible time in fact a misencounter should last if not a few seconds for only a few minutes mm -hmm. but the encounter lasted for 11 hours mm -hmm. and there was no effort at all to exercise restraint i would not expect that from the biff of course but i would have expected let's just assume uh, for the sake of argument that there was no coordination as required by protocol mm -hmm. yet being a friendly force being in the midst of a peace agreement with the government being in the midst of a ceasefire it was incumbent upon the MILF who were involved there mm -hmm. to exercise restraint. Mm -hmm. But did we see that restraint? They say that dead men tell no tales. Mm -hmm. But you look at the dead and the wounds that they bore. Their wounds bear the level of atrocity that was brought upon them, mm -hmm. which now begs the question. You what? think there was overkill? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. this was surely not a misencounter. Mm -hmm. This was, this was a, a massive attack of a superior force uh, of a combined MILF and BIFF force on a uh, lesser numbered uh, SAF uh, contingent, which led to this, and which begs now the question, which begs now the question, yes, uh, it is, it can be assumed that once they are, but it can be assumed that once they are integrated into a Bangsamoro government, it remains to be seen how they will, how they will uh, behave, since they have now uh, exhibited their proclivity mm -hmm. to resort to violence. And you say there was a violation of a peace deal with that? Yes, with that in that sense, uh, there was a violation because mm -hmm. if they were able to assemble a force large enough to overwhelm uh, 392 uh, SAF commandos, then surely they, mm -hmm. they in, had enough time, mm -hmm. they had enough time to relay instructions to their men on the ground Hindi ko naman ano oh. expect na awatin nila yung BIFF mm -hmm. but I I would have fully expected them na awatin nila yung sarili nilang tao. So you're saying because yeah. of the gross violation yes. uh, mm -hmm. it it calls for the review of the, the, the full law. Yes, the sheer number of uh, casualties mm -hmm. beg the question what does this say now of the behavior of the subordinate commanders of the MILF who we believe is supposed to be under the control of the MILF mm -hmm. leadership. Okay, I'll ask, uh, Amina, I'll ask your opinion on, on, uh, yeah. on Ashley's uh, position regarding that point. But in the meantime, uh, we need to take a short break. Uh, meanwhile, you can join the debate via Facebook at facebook.com slash opposing views on 9TV or tweet your thoughts on opposing underscore views. Use the hashtag OV Bangsamoro Law. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. I'm Rod Depomoceno. We have with us Francisco Ashley Acedillo of the Magdalo Party List Representative. On the opposing side is Amina Rasul of the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy. Our debate question for tonight, should the government delay the passage of the Bang Zamora Basic Law? Now, just before the break, uh, Congressman Ashley was making a point uh, regarding uh, the su supposed uh, misencounter, no? according to Congressman Ashley. This wasn't really a case of misencounter. This was a, an attack and therefore a, a, a gross violation of the current peace deal. And therefore, because of this gross violation, we should definitely mm -hmm. pause and review uh, the, the pending uh, BBL or Bangsamoro Basic Law. Mom, your thoughts on that? Well, I will repeat again that uh, one should not negatively impact on the other. Mm -hmm. That this misencounter should not cause further delay on the Bangsamoro Basic Law. But what uh, Congressman um, Ashley was uh, discussing earlier, mm -hmm. that uh, if this procli uh, proclivity for violence, I just uh, heard the interview um, with uh, Secretary Deles and uh, si, uh, retired General um, Bugi Mendoza, nga, and they were saying, with regards to atrocities, the, according to preliminary investigations, the short, this kind of close quarters almost, the fighting was close quarter, and, and you were using mm. heavy arms. Mm. So these were not, uh, what you call it, 
um, you know, out, outrageous out, 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 in, outright attack or something. Like no, that, um, that. explaining the you know, the holes in the faces. Oh, okay. That is what happens when you use higher powered oh. arms, mm -hmm. and it's close quarters. Mm -hmm. So it's not like pitagtataga. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was not intended to uh, inflict more inhumane treatment on on the dead. So overkill. So, I see what overkill. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's one um, thing. That was. Uh, this incident, will this make us suspect how the MILF will behave once they're in government? Well, since it hasn't happened yet, let me just give you the example of our experience with the MNLF in Tigris. Mm -hmm. The MNLF in Tigris, who were part of the decommissioning uh, activity during the 1996 peace agreement, remained the most loyal of the troops who are part of the police or part of the military. In fact, they have been used by government to counter the 2001 entry of the MNLF into Zamboanga. Mm -hmm. They used the integrates there and they fought their brothers. In Sulu, the same thing. They were sent there, they fought their brothers. Zamboanga siege, the MNLF integrates were brought into the fray and they fought their brothers. So if we are going to base our experience on the, uh, the actual performance of the MNLF in Tigris, we have basis to presume that they will do their duty because once they absorb, the, you know, they wear the uniform and they are part of the governments, then mm -hmm. it seems that their loyalty is to, mm -hmm. to government. So uh, I, again, I would like to have uh, to listen to the results of the yeah. investigation. I think, I think everyone should agrees. Not yeah. delay. Should not delay. Should All right. not delay. Uh, let me ask this question to both of you, uh, um, Amina and uh, Ashley. No? Are you satisfied with the progress of the, the BBL? I'll ask you first, uh, Fong Ashley. Are you satisfied the, with the progress of the BBL? I mean, without this incident first. No? Uh, prior to this incident, uh, we were a bit worried uh, because we were given a strict timetable, as a matter of fact. We were told that uh, in the House, we should have passed the BBL by March. Mm -hmm. But then again, we are talking about a five-month delay on the part of the executive in turning over to us the bill. Mm -hmm. So we were assuming that as early as February, when uh, OPAP and our peace panel uh, concluded their uh, uh, work uh, to leading up to the drafting of the bill, that everything was done. Mm -hmm. Yet, it took another five months mm. for Malacanang to, well, the word they used was to clean it up mm. of its infirmities, of uh, uh, mm. the problems. And guess what? When we received it in the house, all the more we raised uh, a lot more questions. Mm -hmm. But we, ha we were constrained by uh, uh, the timetable. Mm -hmm. mm. We tried to work within that timetable, uh, but even the chairman of the ad hoc committee on the BBL himself, uh, Congressman Rufus Rodriguez, was saying that once we go line by line, we might have a hard time reaching that deadline, but we will try our best. Yet, this incident, last January 25, begs us to pause for two reasons at least. Why? First, in deference to those who died. Second, there, there are seven pages in, one, in the 101 pages of the BBL yeah. that pertain to uh, public order and safety. There is uh, one-fourth of a page that refer to transitional justice. Mm -hmm. This figures squarely into what happened uh, mm -hmm. in January 25 and what the impact of that incident is in uh, the mm -hmm. security uh, framework of what will become the Bangsamoro entity. So, so for that reason, we really have to yes, re review the, the whole definitely. thing. Definitely. Yeah. So review but overall, the, you're, you're saying you're, you're not happy or pleased with, yes. with, the, with, with how it's progressed. Because uh, Congress must be allowed uh, due time to uh, exercise both caution and uh, the collect their collective wisdom, which is, of course, the expression of the collective will of the people, uh, in order to for that to factor in into what will become the Bangsamoro basic law. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, Amina, do you feel that uh, given the circumstances overall, the BBL has progressed? I, I, I know that uh, mm. we always want uh, laws to be passed as soon right. as possible, but uh, overall, are, are, you, are you satisfied with the progress of the, the BBL, where, where it has reached? 
uh, where we are at this point? We've been serving as resource persons to both uh, Congressman Rodriguez committee and to Senator March's committee. And the, the questions, the inquiries uh, being made by our legislators are, I think, very focused and have really allowed for a lot of discussions on constitutional issues and others. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is one thing that, uh, since I'm not a legislator, um, I would like to ask our legislators. The BBL is fleshing out previous agreements, the Comprehensive mm -hmm. Agreement mm -hmm. for, for the Bank Zamoro, which has all the annexes. So we have had these documents for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And you could already take a look at what are the problems there. So, I mean, if I were uh, doing my research, I would first look at all of those and already identify what are the problematic situ you know, positions, uh, articles, so that you can start the, the mm. debates much earlier. Mm. But having said that, uh, I think Congressman Rufus has been doing a very good uh, mm. job in getting as much Everyone. input as he can. He even had a um, session just with the uh, constitutionalists. Yes. Senator Marcos, the same. Mm. And the level of uh, research and discussion so we're going, um, I we're think going as, been as fast as, as we fast can. As fast as, as we can. And now um, they're now going to go into executive uh, sessions where you can actually have a lot more in-depth mm -hmm. discussion. Our feeling after having gone through the, the agreements and the BBL, these issues of constitutionality, it can be addressed. Mm -hmm. And that is the power of Congress, that they mm -hmm. can make the necessary yes, amendments. Right. Our only position is that it should not really deviate from the heart of the agreement, the peace agreement, which is to enact real autonomy mm -hmm. for the Bangsamoro, because what are they giving up? They're giving up the war for independence. They're saying we are willing mm -hmm. to be part of the Philippine Republic, but give us autonomy. Mm -hmm. And they have said we will be part of the agreement of the, of the government, we'll be mm -hmm. part of the republic, we will stop our war for independence. Right, okay. Yeah. All right, now, there are certain reactions, mm -hmm. uh, Kong Ashley and uh, Secretary Amina, no, on, on legislators re retracting their endorsements of, uh, of the BBL. Uh, wh what's your reaction on the legislators who are now retracting their yeah. support? Well, uh, I cannot uh, presume to know all of what they're thinking, but... Uh, let me just uh, go back quickly mm. to uh, some of what uh, Secretary Rasul said uh, with regard to the injury sustained. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I will, like her, I will wait for the result yeah. of the investigation as to uh, a conclusion of whether or not there was mutilation that happened after the encounter. Mm. However, I cannot ignore the eyewitness testimony of one of the uh, survivors who was... Uh, uh, caught by media immediately after he was recovered by our security forces. Mm -hmm. And he said, after his uh, comrades were wounded and some of them uh, were running out of ammunition, the enemy got closer to them and finished them off. I cannot ignore that. Mm -hmm. Now, why did, why did I mention this? Mm -hmm. This is uh, relevant into what figures probably into the thinking of our legislators. Mm -hmm. We are here in Congress, mm -hmm. We part of government, and we are contemplating on giving the reins mm -hmm. of autonomous government mm -hmm. to this group. Okay. And this is how a part of that group, I'm not saying the entire yeah, group, that, uh, this is how part, a part of that part of group, group behaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does that say now? My confidence. Sounds alarm bells. Or, the, or lack thereof. Yeah. And probably that is how mm -hmm. they responded. They immediately withdrew. And they were crossing party lines here. Mm -hmm. These were not... Uh, senators from coming from the same party. Yeah. These were different senators from different parties, one from uh, the administration, uh, no, one from the opposition, and two from, from the mm -hmm. uh, administration. So mm -hmm. it, it says here that what happened actually created a, a chilling effect, one, and two, it shattered uh, both yeah. the trust and confidence trust of, the, of, the uh, of certain segments of government, in this case, the legislature, on, on uh, the so other parts so you're saying they're, they're justified, their retraction is justified? Well, I cannot blame them. Yeah. Ma'am, Ma'am Mimina, I'm going to ask your reaction as well no, regarding the retraction of, of some of the legislators. But we need to take a short break. Mm -hmm. Deep tweeting and posting comments on our social media pages. So, uh, more issues on the clash between state forces, the MILF, and BIFF after the break. You're watching Opposing News. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. I'm Rod Nepomuceno. Still with us, Magdalo Party List Representative Francisco Ashley Acedillo and uh, the lead convener of the Philippine Islam Center for, uh, Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, Amina Rasul. Our question, should the government delay the passage of the Bang Zamora Basic Law? Now, just before the, the break, uh, Congressman Ashley uh, made a reaction uh, regarding the retraction of some legislators, I guess in summary, you don't you don't blame them because of of, of, what, of what happened, no? Um, uh, Ma'am uh, Amina, do you do you think that uh, this is justified the retraction of some of the lawmakers? Is it just playing politics, or wh what do you think? Well, it's almost a political season, so I yeah. guess you you, you know doing what the pop that means. the popular thing. You, think. you know what that means? Free uh, advertising, yeah. so that your na name recall. Mm -hmm. But I I always gauge. Uh, the proper uh, actions of legislator based on what I experienced when my mother was in the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, so when Senator Rasul was uh, in the Senate of, mm -hmm. um, during the term of President uh, uh, Cory Aquino and President Ramos, mm -hmm. uh, they were circumspect. You know, they always applied prudence mm -hmm. before making official statements because mm -hmm. um, first, they needed to get all the facts of the case. So before they make a statement, because once you make the statement, it's there forever, mm -hmm. and it can uh, create negative uh, impacts. Kung mali ang premise, mm -hmm. and in this particular case, when you say uh, when all out war is mm -hmm. the, the appropriate thing, you inflame mm -hmm. um, the right. already hot emotions. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, based on what I know, uh, the way my mother, uh, as a senator, performed their duties, you know, it, it, yeah. like, uh, like uh, Congressman uh, Ashley, you wait for the investigation. Mm -hmm. So do you think that they just, they just made a retraction, uh, I guess, emotional? Heat of the uh, moment. The heat of the moment, do you think? But basically those two, we, at least we know two who, who have categorically said they're going to pull out. Do you think that eventually they'll, they'll calm down and... and and go back to supporting the Well, we hope so, uh -huh. because um, based on preliminary uh, information that were shared, for instance, by Secretary Deles mm -hmm. of what uh, happened during the investigations, uh, it, it um, makes us uh, realize that it really was a misencounter. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the violation of protocols, mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, you, the congressman was mentioning earlier, now, maybe the MILF should have called immediately. But the thing is, their contacts in the joint action group were not informed either. Mm -hmm. So even if you called the AFP or the Maguindanao police, what's going on here, what so would they tell you? They didn't know. Would you say it's just a, an error on both sides, do you think? I think a lot of errors, errors happen, and, and so sides, no? it needs to, it, you really need to have a very sober and impartial investigation, investigation and those who were responsible for this, atrocities and all, should be made to answer okay. for what they uh, uh, yes. oh, yeah, sure. um, There are many of us also in Congress uh, who have been uh, calling for uh, the uh, temporary uh, suspension of the deliberations. Uh, we, we cited again two reasons uh, for, for that call. It's actually been formalized into two House resolutions. And basically, uh, the reasons are, uh, are these. First, uh, this is out of deference to the casualties of, of the Mamasapano clash. And second, this will allow us some time to wait for the result of the investigation, which we believe will factor into uh, especially in that aspect of transitional justice mm -hmm. and uh, public order and safety as contained in the Bangsamoro Basic Law. Now, uh, we do not like to be painted in a corner that mm -hmm. uh, by calling for uh, a temporary suspension that we are stoking mm -hmm. the flames of violence and war. We would like to believe, uh, and we firmly believe in this, that we, we represent uh, a segment of... Uh, uh, government that are uh, considered voices of caution. Mm -hmm. We are voices of caution and we are also voices of reason. Mm -hmm. uh, if the MILF would like to use that, and I'm hoping uh, they, do not, they did not imply that in their statement when they said that if there was going to be a delay, that there were going to be complications, mm -hmm. I hope they will not resort to mm -hmm. violence, right. as was the case 
in 2009 when the MOA AD was struck down by the Supreme Court. So we're saying this because uh, we may be calling for the temporary suspension, but at no point in time, even at the height of emotions, did we call for an all-out war? Yeah. Mm. First. Second, did we call for the abrogation yeah. of the, the peace agreement? Peace okay. At no point in time did we do that. But we, we do need to uh, take a pause precisely because the sheer number of casualties mm. begs us to look deeper into things. Mm -hmm. And by extension, when we look into what happened into Mama Sapano, that also begs us to look into the Bangsamoro Basic Law and what should factor into that, especially in this final stage of the deliberation. So actually, given, uh, say, go, go ahead. Uh, the, I, we thank uh, Congressman Ashley because mm. their, their responses have been very tempered, mm. uh, unlike some of his yeah. other colleagues. colleagues. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, when, when you're talking about, again, um, delaying because of this incident, this incident may have impact on certain sections of the BBL. Uh, particularly on security. Saying the delaying will have impact. The, the no, delaying no. will have the, impact. This incident, this, incident, this okay. encounter would right. have impact on one, right. on some sections, on some articles uh, in the BBL. But the debates on constitutionality, uh, should uh, there be a Bangsamoro Komelek, a Bangsamoro Koa, that's got nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. So when you suspend all of the deliberations, then you really do add unnecessary delay because you could be discussing the constitutional issues first. Other aspects. Yes, yeah. well, mm -hmm. awaiting. Not the, the seven, not the seven pages yeah. that you the mentioned. Oh, so. You can put that at the at the, uh, at the tail end. Would and you say though that there's going to be, uh, I guess, the consequences of a delay, given the reasons uh, by Kong Ashley, would uh, uh, would be, I guess, would, would it far outweigh uh, the the benefits of it being pass right away or continuing on with the deliberation. Do you, do you think that perhaps a delay and perhaps pausing, one for deference and the other one is to have a comprehensive review, uh, should, is that meritorious, is that a meritorious um, position to take at the moment? Well, uh, or do you think that <coughs> we can't afford that? We can't afford that kind of the delay. Personally, I think uh, because those, um, those uh, troops of ours who sacrifice their lives uh, perhaps led unknowingly into something that they shouldn't have been uh, involved in. Um, to honor them, because they were doing their duty, mm -hmm. to honor them, then I think we should also do our duty and continue the process towards establishing a lasting peace so that we no longer have situations like this, the unnecessary sacrifice of Filipino soldiers and, uh, and Filipino police who are doing their duty. Mm. And again, I have to, I have to uh, restate, na, let's look at the, the other issues that have nothing to do with, uh, with the security situation to save time. Now, uh, you mentioned that the MILF uh, made a statement that uh, the necessary delay could have uh, severe uh, consequences. Let me just say that we have known from the very beginning that this peace process has created some rifts. That's why you have the BIFF that moved out after MOA AD. And you have got a central committee in the MILF that is invested in the peace process. And they have staked their leadership and their reputations on the peace process. And outside the central committee, you have groups like the BIFF, and they're still in contact, siempre, with all of the other commanders. When you have unnecessary delay, which may seem uh, unjustified uh, at mm -hmm. the ground level, you are taking away from the leadership of the MILF that's invested in this process. And you are giving more ammunition to those who are outside and who are saying we should continue to the war for independence. I see that as a major mm -hmm. consequence. Now, mm -hmm. I know that the Central Committee under uh, Chairman Murad have been very successful in holding, holding forth and getting the communities invested in peace. Mm -hmm. And I would really want us to continue mm -hmm. um, that kind of a situation so that in the shortest time possible, right. we can already have 
the peace that we have been dreaming of for, for decades. Okay, Secretary, I mean, I'm sorry. I know you don't want to weigh in, uh, Congressman Ashley, but we need to take a short okay. break. But I will allow you to weigh in on that. Uh, for, for the meantime, uh, please don't go away. Uh, we'll come back with the final points of our guests and the results of our ongoing online poll on the issue. Stay tuned. You're watching Opposing Views. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Opposing Views. I'm Rod Depomuceno. Still with us, Magdalo Party List Representative Francisco Ashley Acedillo and Lead Convener of the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, Amina Rasul. Our question for tonight, should the government delay the passage of the Bangzamoro Basic Law? Now, just before we took a break, uh, Secretary uh, Amina was making a point that uh, we shouldn't delay. We shouldn't delay the, uh, the, the deliberations on the BBL, uh, specifically uh, for provisions regarding constitutionality and uh, I guess more the economic uh, provisions of the law uh, and uh, instead perhaps we could just spend the, the mm -hmm. item regarding security, mm -hmm. uh, security you know, and the overall peace. Uh, your reaction to that, uh, Kong Ashley? Um, my reaction, uh, Attorney Rod, is that uh, the pause that we were referring to a while ago uh, adds a third dimension to it mm -hmm. and that is to allow confidence building measures to come into play mm -hmm. because remember we are not only talking about uh, academic and theoretical mm -hmm. deliberations you are also talking about uh, thinking uh, and feeling and emotions. Uh, people yeah. Yeah. these are our legislators we have to address that aspect as well and I'll, I'll get to the point of the confidence building measures uh, later on we go back to the difficulty of the MILF in uh, reining in their people mm -hmm. Precisely, they should be in that difficulty because that is the meaning of governance. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, we will be handing reins to them, uh, yeah. to them uh, of governance. And they should recognize this. Remember, they themselves and even the president himself admitted that the separation uh, of the BIFF and the MILF in various levels of the MILF organization is merely nominal mm -hmm. because more abiding are the blood and the intermarriage ties, mm -hmm. which makes it very, very convenient for alliances at the operational and tactical level. Mm -hmm. This is by no means a policy mm -hmm. uh, decision of the MILF, but that's just the way things are on the ground. Mm -hmm. We need to consider these things because we may pass the BBL mm -hmm. with great effort and by some miracle, but we will still have to contend with these issues later mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Why not factor these things in into the BBL, further strengthen it? Mm -hmm. Because in the end, uh, we are invested in ensuring mm -hmm. that the law is strong in so many aspects, mm -hmm. not just in the aspect of constitutionality. Mm -hmm. It may should I also be equally it? strong in mm -hmm. the aspect of viability and sustainability. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are looking here. Oh. Yes, uh, yeah. Congressman Amina. Ashley, about blood ties, huh? um, I know where you're getting at, but let's take a look at national government and local governments. Blood ties have, um, we've seen in, in past occurrences, um, had government officials protecting clan members who should have been given up uh, to the law for various violations. You hear and you have uh, investigative journalists talking about drug syndicates that have links to local government officials. And this has been going on for decades. And government still hasn't really done much about it. You see the same people getting elected again. But we're not saying the democratic form of governance is bad. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's for, for me, that's the only uh, successful form of governance. The MILF, they're not yet used to, to governance. And we need to be able to get them the assistance so they know what it means to be yeah, in a democratic yeah. uh, government. How do you react? What are your responsibilities? But we should not make it impossible for them right now by giving ammunition to those who are opposing them for control. Because the Central Committee right now are allies of the Philippine government for peace. Mm -hmm. 
those you have to be worried about are those who are outside the, fringes, mm. the Central Committee yeah. so that they do not take over the command of the center. That's what we, that's, that's, what, that's what we you, from Mindanao mm -hmm. really worry about. All right. About. Um, unfortunately, we're, we're running out of time, so I, I need to uh, throw in a couple more questions, no? um, especially with regards to some reactions. Um, and we had a, a very, I guess, famous reaction from former President Arab. Uh, he said he declared an all-out war. No? And uh, mm -hmm. uh, Amina, your, your thoughts uh, on, on that uh, reaction of Arab? Well, I can only say to uh, Pangulong Erap, no, no to all out war. There is no justification for a war at this point in time, mm -hmm. not when we are so close to peace. Mm -hmm. the, the, success, the successes that the government has had, for instance, in controlling uh, violations of ceasefire agreements are, are there on mm -hmm. record. Mm -hmm. So because you have a misencounter that may uh, have been for... Uh, financial reasons, as I understand it. Um, Congressman Ashley and I were talking earlier about the possibility that uh, was this because of a $5 million reward? Yeah, I was going to ask I don't about know. That, yeah. I hope the investigation mm. uh, tells us that. So perhaps it's, it's, it's nothing more than just an encounter for the $5 million. Yeah. I, yeah. Hope, I hope not, because mm. if, if that happens, my God, I mean, the top leadership of the PNP gets uh, yeah. embroiled in things like this, but right. under no circumstance is this enough justification, uh, justification for an all-out war. Mm -hmm. Because you have an all-out war, who's going to suffer? Mm -hmm. Everyone, I guess. My relatives who are in, in Mindanao, mm -hmm. the, the, the agricultural mm -hmm. community, business community, we cannot afford any all-out war scenario now, not with the global situation the way it is, mm -hmm. where you have a strengthening of terrorist elements again, like ISIS. Yes. What if you have an all-out war situation and then you have our groups here, the extremist groups, banding yeah, exactly. together? Kong That's Ashi, going yeah. to be worse. Kong Ashi, your, yeah, your Tony Rod, uh, I'll just mm -hmm. deal quickly with the issue of the $5 million bounty. Sure. Uh, I don't think that was the case here. Mm -hmm. Why do I say so? The nature of a reward, uh, like the $5 million, is to uh, encourage people to come forward with information that will lead to the arrest. Mm -hmm of uh, high-value personalities. Yeah. Uh, if, if it were the case that the reward would go to the people who will capture dead or alive, Marwan, for example, mm -hmm. people should have been lining up mm -hmm. to arrest him. Mm -hmm. Because, don't pupunta yung ano eh, yung mm -hmm. reward eh. But that is not the case here. Uh, a, an, uh, the arrest of Marwan and Basit Usman uh, can never be viewed as a uh, fundraising uh, mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm sure, uh, I have no fear that even the investigation will bear that out. Mm, uh, now, but going to the issue of uh, uh, the all-out war, uh, it served its purpose in 2000. Why do we say this? For those who know, the MILF, an armed rebel organization at that time, grew to such strength that they were, to, that they were able to establish several camps throughout Mindanao. And uh, as a matter of fact, conduct checkpoints and deny overflights over their territory. Mm -hmm. So it had to be done. And they were brought, because of that war, they were brought to the point of exhaustion that they went back to the peace table. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, that served its purpose. But it served its purpose then. Mm -hmm. It will not serve that purpose because now. How far we've, because we've gone. we have we've gone, gone so far, That's as right. our Secretary yeah. Rasul has right. said. All right. mm -hmm. And I definitely will not also call out yeah. for a, uh, mm -hmm. an all-out war, yeah. uh, contrary to uh, what people have been saying that uh, it is the way mm -hmm. to go. No. Yeah. But also, we cannot ignore what happened last January 25. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we are asking that this be a time to pause mm -hmm. for, for just the three reasons mm -hmm. I cited a while ago. All right. Uh, how about a reaction naman to uh, Senator Alan Peter Cayetano's statement? No? And I quote, Ang mas sakit po dito ang hinahabol naman ay uh, isang international terrorist. Hindi ba dapat na uh, out of good faith ang, MI, ang MILF nang humuli doon at sila ang nagpresent sa ating authorities? Mm -hmm. Meron namang $5 million na bounty on the head. Pero ang nangyari ang baliktad. I'm disgusted about what's happening and I really doubt na mapapasa itong da mm -hmm. dahil sa nangyari. Uh, Secretary Amina, your, your mm -hmm. thoughts on that reaction? Well, I, I, I got from the interview with the Secretary Deles that the preliminary um, 
results you know, of the investigation uh, says that, that uh, Marwan was not in the area. In the, the area, okay. okay. Uh, that's the intelligence report. Mm -hmm. So, you know, makes you makes uh, makes you wonder how could this have come to pass if the guy wasn't there in the first place. Mm -hmm. All right, Kong, uh, uh, your your thoughts on that uh, reaction? Uh, 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 well, uh, if uh, Marwan wasn't there, as uh, the investigation. Uh, uh, <coughs> has uh, brought to light, mm. it does not detract the fact that it was still a lawful uh, operation. Uh, there is a warrant, and the warrant itself, as any agent uh, of the court will understand, is the authority for any uh, officer of the law to serve that warrant to effect the arrest of the subject of that warrant. Mm -hmm. That does not detract, that does not diminish in any way the, uh, the, the operation. What, was, what must be uh, brought to light even further are the persons responsible right. on the side of the PNP. We'd like to know because you cannot just make these decisions and have 44 people killed and nobody gets nobody to answer gets. for it mm -hmm. within the organization. But also, uh, we are saying that the BIFF had a hand in this. Whether they were totally uh, responsible for it remains to be seen. But on the statements of the MILF themselves, mm -hmm. they admitted already that some of their uh, men participated in that encounter. Mm -hmm. right. Right. And hopefully, the investigation will bring to light who these men are, because these men must be brought to justice. Mm -hmm. Because remember- Both on the PNP uh, side and the MILF. Yes, mm -hmm. because remember Attorney Rad, uh, Secretary Rasul, if we are for peace, and we are, two pillars of peace, are that there should be a rule of law, mm -hmm. and it should be applied equally to everyone. And second, it should be peace, but it should be peace with justice. All right, uh, we have uh, we have a few more minutes left, uh, so I have just enough time to get your final words. No, so we'll start off with you, uh, Secretary Mina. Your final words, and perhaps uh, let us know your, your your key messages to our televiewers mm -hmm. with regard to this question whether we should delay the, the passage of the, the Bangsamoro law given this incident. Mm -hmm. This, this very, very tragic incident that happened in Mama Sapano has to be addressed squarely. And those who are responsible for leading our police to, to their tragic deaths should be made to answer for it. And if there is any uh, uh, um, problem with the MILF uh, soldiers, then the MILF, I agree with Congressman Ashley, they should uh, address that situation as well. But this has nothing to do with the Bangsamoro Basic Law. I, if I may repeat myself, to honor our fallen who are doing their duty, then we should also do our duty and make sure we have peace the soonest time possible. And the one way to do that is to continue the deliberations, but put to last the section on security. And lastly, we cannot afford the consequence of another return to war. Worldwide, we have seen already the, the rising of all of these different uh, terrorist elements in uh, Syria and elsewhere. And we cannot afford any resurgence of, uh, of a conflict here that would create a scenario where the Abu Sayyaf, the BIFF come together mm -hmm. and link with these groups. Right. Let us give peace a chance. That is the best way to, serve, to ensure a very strong Filipino Republic, mm -hmm. a very strong Filipino people, and a strong economy. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Secretary Amina. Uh, Kong Ashley, <coughs> your final words uh, on this uh, debate question. Uh, we condole with the families of the dead uh, police commandos, and in so doing, we would like to assure them that the deaths of their loved ones the PNP staff will not be in vain. And we, we would like to give that assurance by way of undertaking certain things. One is that uh, there should be uh, a thorough and impartial investigation, and that the result of that investigation should arm us in Congress better in addressing what are still obtaining circumstances on the ground, mm -hmm. which uh, serve as stumbling blocks to peace mm -hmm. because they are they are still present there. Mm -hmm. uh, the, these PNP commandos 
were there to uh, to impose the rule of law mm -hmm. uh, in a uh, law enforcement operation. That is in support of peace. Yet, certain stumbling blocks presented themselves, which led to their deaths, and which lead us to question the continuing viability mm -hmm. of uh, this uh, piece of legislation, which is the Bangsa Moro Basic Law. Therefore, we need to address that if we are to honor their memory. Because truly, if there should be peace in Mindanao, it should cover as many aspects as it can. Mm -hmm. And it should also cover what, should, what happened in Mama Sapano. Right. Because what happened there, what was present there, which led to their death, is surely a stumbling block to peace. And we would, not, we would like to remove that stumbling block. All right. Thank you very much, Congressman Ashley. All right, thanks to our guests, uh, Magda Lepartilis, Representative Francisco Ashley Asadilio, and the lead convener of the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, Amina Rasul. Thank you so much for guesting on our show. Let's see the results now of our online poll. We asked you, should the government delay the passage of the Bangzamora Basic Law? Those who answered yes, it should be delayed 60%. Those who answered no, 40%. And that's our opposing views for tonight. Tune in again next week for another bold and engaging discussion on today's most relevant issues. I'm Rod Depomoceno. Good night and God bless. Happy weekend.